then you use that burnishing method and what that is is it's basically creating a waxy coating on top of the layers that you've created to blend all of that together with cat eyes the pupils are more of an almond shape than dog eyes so there's a lot that goes on inside of the cat eyes and there seems to be a lot more color because the pupils get a lot smaller than dog eyes so Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now this very first one is of a smaller, well it's a bigger portrait but it's two cats so they're a little bit smaller size. So you wanna start out with the outline of course and you can use a black or a dark grayish brown like a dark sepia instead of black if you don't feel comfortable always using black. Sometimes I will challenge myself and use different colors. Fill it in with some sort of sea green. This kind of um, eye here has a lot of green to it. And I notice a lot of cat eyes have that. So you have some sea green in there and a little bit of a warm tone. So you can use a brown or an orange. You'll see the examples later. Now you also want to burnish afterwards with a white or very pale sort of color. The same techniques, you always want to leave room for the highlights as you can see in the pupil there. Once you have everything filled in, and that, then you use that burnishing method and what that is is it's basically creating a waxy coating on top of the layers that you've created to blend all of that together. And I highly suggest using a lighter color for something like that at least for a little while until um, you know you've built up a lot of darker layers and then you can use darker then you want to shade by using um, darker colors but not something black per se not for all of them at least Now with round eyes, because a lot of cat eyes are more um, slivers, almond shape kind of eyes, but this is round. So of course you get your outline done and then use mix of warm tones. So it can be orange, brown, um, but having those, and then you can even add a little bit of pink to it, uh, depending on the colors that you want to use, but I'm using that pink to kind of do a burnish effect essentially. And then you also want to, once again, leave room for the highlights. There's a lot of little specks in the eye, especially in the pupil of the eye. So leaving room for that is very, very, very crucial to creating a realistic portrait overall. And then multicolored cat eyes. So sometimes there are animals that have two different colored eyes. So I'll show you an example for this one. So you want to just, once again, start out with basic outline. Make sure um, you know, you're not using heavy pressure at first. You're just filling it in layer by layer. And then one eye is bluer. So I'm using a mix of gray tones with a little bit of blue in there. And of course you want to um, shade it. There's a lot more shading going on at the top because there's more of a shadow effect happening a lot of the time. So that's what um, I did here was added a little bit more shading at the top, brought in a little bit of gray towards the bottom, but a lot of cat eyes have a, quite a bit of detail because their pupils can get smaller. So I try to emphasize that as much as possible by creating little specks, little lines, texture essentially in the eye itself. And then you repeat the same steps for the other side, of course, but this one is different because it has different colors. So it's blue on one side and orange on the other. And the pupils even look a little bit different. So they're kind of slanted like this a little, and that's how you want to create them. The cat is looking up too. So there's quite a bit of open space underneath for you to be able to add color there. 
So the first layer I used a little bit of orange, then I thickened up some of the um, outline because this side had a little bit of a thicker outline than the left side. And that's one thing that you wanna be aware of too is no eye, no two eyes are gonna be the same. So if they look a little bit different in the reference image, then try to replicate that as much as possible. I know it's really like OCD, you wanna make sure that both of them look the same, but if you make them look more like the portrait, it's gonna look more realistic overall. So adding that texture in is so important. And then you can use a little bit of a cooler tone to highlight the bottom area a little bit. So that creates that contrast essentially. You can also use a gel pen to emphasize the highlights a little bit more. That's something that I love to use as a um, little bit of like a party trick essentially is using that gel pen in the highlights. Now, blue cat eyes are very interesting. This one has a lot of cold tones to it. There's not a lot of warm tones happening. So I don't use a lot of browns or even um, brownish warm grays either. So you just fill it in. Your first layer is gonna be with a cool blue or gray color. And then there's a lot of white in the eyes for this one. So that's something that you really don't want to ignore is the white of the eyes that not always they're not always going to be there but that is important to um, make sure you're leaving room for that and then as you're filling in as you can see i've created a texture to the eyes there and i made sure that i was leaving room for the um the highlights and i'm not even talking about the reflections now i'm talking about the lighter part of the eye so around the rim is darker and then closer to the pupil is lighter most of the time for most animals. So keep that in mind and then you can go back over using um, you know, a white or a very light blue to burnish what you have and just start to darken it up, repeat the same um, steps for, you'll find there's quite a lot of pattern patterns happening with um, all of these portraits. So just be mindful of that as you're going through that, oh, it's gonna be about the same thing, you know? Um, and then you can use a gel pen. Now this is a different kind of gel pen. It just kind of slightly lightens it instead of adding on the white. And you can use it in really dark areas and it just looks very natural, more natural than an actual gel pen. It's just basically a white pen. Um, for white artist pen. You can use that. And then you repeat the same steps for the other side. I like to kind of draw a little bit on the outside of the um, eye once I'm done. So you'll see that sometimes I have a little bit more done than just the inside of the eye. And that's okay, I just like to do that. It's more habit than anything else. But if you're just practicing eyes, you definitely don't have to practice that part if you're not comfortable just yet. I really hope that this video was helpful. If you um, are wanting to learn more about animal features, I am creating a whole playlist of animal features. So it's gonna be um, a lot of something like this, comparison videos, more in depth, the key components to drawing certain animal features. So cat eyes, dog eyes, they're gonna be more pet oriented. I'm hoping that this is going to be very helpful for you to learn from when you're drawing your own pet. And please do not forget to like and subscribe. It really does help 
and if you can also hit the notification so that you'll know when I will be posting the next video. If you are interested in learning to draw realistically, I also have a Patreon where it's just 11 bucks a month and you can learn to draw any sort of wildlife animal, all done in four by four inch size. You can, um, you know, complete them in bigger size if you want, but they're all done in four by four. They're just about a couple hours long and they're a whole lot of fun. I have a lot of my students say it's just a relaxing video to watch and follow along. So I will have the link in the description below. And if you really want to learn to draw your own pet or pet portraits, I have a program that's eight weeks long where you can learn to draw realistic pet portraits. It includes different types of patterned fur as well as color fur and animal features. So there's gonna be a lot more in-depth animal features and you get to follow along all of these videos. So they will be, each week will have a different subject. And then by the end, you will practice a pet portrait of a dog. And then the very last week, you'll get to draw your own pet and I will help you along the way. So all of that's gonna be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.